So for this problem right here, right, we're just going to be looking at, uh, you know, it's a combination of balancing an equation and then doing, uh, um, you know, a gas law problem. And so, uh, you know, just straight up reading it, it's a mixture of gases contains 0.2 moles of sulfur dioxide and 0 0.20 moles of oxygen in a 4.0 liter flask, and that reacts then to form sulfur trioxide. So the first thing we want to do, right, is write and balance the equation. So if we look at it, uh, oops, go back one, right, so if we look at it, we have uh, SO2, and that's going to be reacting with O2, and what we end up forming is SO3, right, so sulfur trioxide. And so balancing it out, right, what we can see is that we have four oxygens on the left, three oxygens on the right, one sulfur on the left, one sulfur on the right. And so the easiest way to do this, right, is we can probably, uh, um, you know, address the amount of oxygens that are needed. So if we make this an even number over here, right, so if we double it, so now we have two SO3, so that makes gives us two sulfurs and six oxygens on the right. So to balance that out, if we just simply add a two, in front of the SO2, um, right, what we get is then two sulfurs and then four sulf oxygens from the SO2, and then we saw the two oxygens from O2, so that gets the 6O2 over there as well. So now we have a balanced equation. And so again, right, thinking about what we have, we have 0 0.2 moles of SO2, right, we have 0 0.2 moles of oxygen in this case. And so looking at it, what we can see is that the limiting reagent is going to be the sulfur dioxide because we're going to they both have equal number of moles of oxygen and so2 um and so then that means that the one that has the higher coefficient right is going to be the limiting reagent in this case and so we're going to be consuming all of the so2 in this instance and so the thing to think about um right is that we can just simply do an ice table um and so Right, so we have ice, so I is initial, so we're gonna have to start off with zero moles of SO3. Right, we have 0 0.2 moles of SO2, 0 0.2 moles of O2. And so in this case, because the SO2 is the limiting reagent, we're gonna lose all of it, so we're gonna lose 0 0.2 moles of the SO2. In the case of the O2, right, because it's not the limiting reagent, we're only going to then lose half the amount, right? So we're only gonna lose 0 0.1 moles of the O2, and then for the SO3, right, we're going to now gain 0 0.2 moles. So we now have 0 0.2 moles of SO3 in this case, and so then the final concentrations or amounts are going to be 0 moles of SO2, 0 0.1 moles of O2, and then 0 0.2 moles of SO3. So, right, we're balanced. We figured out how much we have of everything once the reaction is complete within our flask. So the next and final, you know, question is, is what's going to be the pressure? So what we can easily do is just simply use the ideal gas law. And so if we treat both O2 and SO3 as ideal gases, and we know that an ideal gas, it doesn't matter what the composition is, it's going to have the same exact effect overall. So we can just simply combine those two values right here together so that what we have is actually 0 0.3 moles of an ideal gas in our flask in this instance, right? So um, a common mistake that people do is because they get so fixated on the reaction, they only focus on uh, what happens with the SO3, um, right? And then they'll only use 0.2 moles in, in the next step right here to calculate what the pressure is in the flask or they won't even think about running the reaction, right? They'll just think in their minds, okay, there has to be a total of 0 0.4 moles that is present within uh, the overall flask because of the fact that you start off with 0 0.2 moles and you have another 0 0.2 moles. So you ha you know, you're you not gonna be losing any moles. And so people then might say like, you know, there's 0 0.4 moles in the flask, right? And so both of those are incorrect. So uh, uh, it should be 0 0.3 moles and that's because you have 0.2 moles of SO3, right, which is what the, the product from the reaction is, and then you still have that leftover oxygen, right, that, that 0.1 mole from that, those get combined together if we consider them all to be ideal gases, um, and so we would use that for the next part of this equation, right, and so now what we would want to do is uh, set up uh, um, our ideal gas law, right, so we know that PV equals NRT, right, and so we know, right, P is pressure, V is volume, N is the number of moles, R is the gas constant, right? So we have this guy right here, and then T is temperature. So, um, you know, the, the, the best way to do this is just simply to rearrange the equation. So all we have to do is plug in our values. 
So if we do that, right, what we just simply have to do is just do P is equal to NRT over V, right? So we just divide everything by the volume. And so we can plug in the values that we have now. And so we know, right, that we have 0 0.3 moles of an ideal gas based off of the reaction and the ice table that we had done. Next, right, we have R, which in this case, we would just simply use the, um, the R value of 0 0.082 liters atmospheres per Kelvin moles. Um, 0.082 liters atmospheres Kelvin mole. Nope. Can all be under a much bigger parentheses right there. All right, and the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. And so 25 degrees Celsius, right? So if it's 25 degrees Celsius to convert that into Kelvin, it would just simply be 25 plus. 273 so that gives us 298 kelvin right so now we have 298 kelvin here take that and now we would divide that by the volume and so we are told right here right that the the volume of the flask is four liters 4.0 liters and so all we have to do now is just simply plug all of this into our calculator so let me just pull that bad boy out real quick so it's 0 0.3 times 0 0.082 times 298 divided by 4. So what we get then in the end, right, and the nice thing is, you know, by setting it all up with, with this way too, is that we can easily see, right, the moles cancel. We can see that the temperatures cancel, right, we can see the liters cancel. So all we end up with is atmospheres at the end. So what we have now is a pressure of 1.8 atmospheres, right? Um, and in all honesty, you could probably, you know, if you're if you're going to be really, really strict about the fact uh, uh, of sig figs, right, it's probably even, you know, more correct to actually just simply call it 2 ATM just because, right, the, the number of moles of sulfur dioxide was 0.2, mole, uh, 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 0.2 moles, right? And so it's not a, uh, um, you know, it only has one significant figure in that case, right? But 1.8 or 2, both of those should be acceptable answers.